Oh, hey there. A lot of people really love the Legend of Zelda series, and I'm not one of them. I mean, I've played through a few, never beat any, so I can't really give my opinion all that well because I haven't beat the games or played all of them. Don't get me wrong, I highly respect the series, but I just wasn't as crazy about it as others. I'm not an addict of the series like some other people. However, there is one Zelda game that I will defend if it meant everything I had. You can't take this away from me! Link's Crossbow Training is probably my favorite Zelda game. The original idea for the game started during Ocarina of Time's development, where Shigeru Miyamoto stated that he wanted the game to be in first person, but the idea for it was scrapped very shortly. He then proposed the idea after Twilight Princess released, saying he wanted a side story to Twilight Princess, where it was an alternate timeline and Link had a gun. Now can you tell me why this wasn't a good idea? The idea of the side story that Miyamoto had slowly faded away from a side story to quirky Twilight Princess spinoff. People were still a little hesitant about this idea, so Miyamoto proposed the idea of making a prototype of the game, and Nintendo got some random Zelda fans to play the game. And the fans all liked the game, therefore development for Link's Crossbow Training officially began. Link's Crossbow Training came bundled with this little nugget that's called the Wii Zapper, directly referencing the NES Zapper. But us Link's Crossbow Training fans just called the gun. People bashed this thing so hard when it first came out, saying it was uncomfortable and it made the games that supported it harder, and how it was extremely unnecessary. You're playing Link's Crossbow Training, alright? Say the game is necessary with a straight face, that's right, you can't. Personally, I think it's pretty alright. It's definitely an unnecessary accessory, but it's still fine. All this thing is, is a plastic holder for the Wii Remote and Nunchuck, and it holds it in a way that makes you feel like you're going to war. Since it's just a holder for the Wii Remote, it's compatible with every game on the Wii. I bet you always wanted to play bowling like this. I will admit, it is a bit clunky to use, especially with the nunchuck wire, but there is a cavity on the bottom of the zapper that helps with this. Unfortunately, it requires a college degree in physics to figure it out. After you do figure it out, the nunchuck wire still presses against the back of your thumb, so it's always kind of in the way no matter what. So I usually just leave the wire hang down the side of the zapper. It's depressing, but so is a man who says Link's Crossbow Training is his favorite Zelda game. Alright, I've been waiting too long for this moment. Time to get into the game. Oh man, I can't wait to see all the kinds of things that the Wii Zapper can do, and all the modes and stuff that- th three- three modes. Does adjust alignment count? Yes, only three modes. Score Attack, the main mode, Multiplayer, and Practice. Score Attack has 9 levels with 3 stages in each level and you try to go for the highest score. Multiplayer is just Score Attack, but you choose the exact same levels individually and pass the zapper around to friends and take turns to get a high score. And Practice is just multiplayer, but you're only picking the same individual levels with only one player. Adjust Alignment is the most unique mode here. Once you choose your mode in your file represented by me, you then choose your level you want to play on. First we're going to look at the target practice levels. They look pretty boring, and yeah, they're definitely the least exciting type of level that the game offers, but they're still kind of fun. Might as well get this out of the way now. So how you get points in this game is obviously by shooting the things the game wants you to shoot with Link's crossbow. The key to racking up a lot of points in a quick amount of time is to keep your shots consecutive so you don't miss anything. There's many different things you can shoot in the target practice levels. You can shoot targets, bad targets, better targets, beautiful pieces of pottery, handcrafted signs, the neighbor's money that they hid inside the pottery, Deku nuts, weird egg things, scarecrows, organic farm-grown pumpkins, produce balloons, chickens, water chickens, human and or animal skulls, and other things. The target levels are set up in three different segments, with the third segment being different, based on how many targets you get in the previous segments. Take for example level 7-1, underground target practice. If you get enough targets in the previous two segments, you'll go to the left side of the room where there's a bunch of targets and gold targets that you can shoot to get a dump truck load of points and a self-esteem boost. If you don't get enough targets in the previous segments of the level, you go to the right side of the room and get punished by having eternal nightmares. You'll never sleep again. Unrelated, but when you shoot the targets, the targets just explode. Usually when you hit a wooden target with an arrow, the arrow just gets stuck in the target. But in this game, they explode into a million pieces. Where does the arrow go? Usually when you shoot a hard structure that doesn't give you any points, the arrow just bonks off. But when you shoot the targets, and the targets explode, does the arrow just turn invisible? Does it explode along with the target? Does it go through the target and fly for a long time and eventually hit the ground? Or does it fly through the target into the neighbor's homes and possibly kill them? 
Am I accidentally murdering people by doing target practice with my semi-automatic crossbow? Do you ever feel that you need to call 911 on yourself? Officer, please, I've been shooting pumpkins, chickens, and I think I'm going to kill somebody. Just arrest me already! Level 5-1 Uka target practice is the only target level that I'm not that fond of. Reason being is just it's hard to shoot the targets with the Uka and their weird flight patterns. They go side to side while going up and down, and sometimes they slow down mid-flight, sometimes they go faster. It's just really awkward, and I constantly shoot the Uka on accident because of the weird flight patterns. So yeah, not too bad, but it's definitely not my favorite level in the game. Level F-1 range target practice is the only target level without targets. Instead of shooting targets, we have to take down the Legion. This one's pretty good. I just find it funny that they labeled this as a target practice level instead of a defender level. This could have easily been a defender level, but I feel like they just ran out of ideas for target levels, so they took a defender level and modified it to be a target level. It's still good, but why is this a target level? Do you think I'm thinking about this a little too hard? Overall, the target practice levels are fun, definitely the least interesting levels in the game, but there's still a lot of fun you can have with these. But yeah, overall, pretty simple, pretty good. Moving on to the Defender levels, these ones have you stay in one specific spot in third person, so you're constantly staring at the back of Link's neck. Defenders have you look around Link's surroundings to search for point slaves. Defenders are the most simple types of levels in the game, you just shoot all the enemies or objects on the screen. Defenders are probably my least favorite type of level in the game, just because of how mindless they are. There's only two Defender levels that you actually move on something. You're either chilling on the slowest boat imaginable in Zora's River, or you're on a wagon shooting down the riot on the bridge of Elden! These two are the best defender levels in the game, just because you're actually moving. You get some new pixels on the screen. The other nine defender levels just have you standing in one spot looking around like a mosquito flew by your ear the entire time. And then there's three defender levels where you don't look around. You just stare straight forward and that's it. Like seriously, just look at this gameplay. The final boss, the final boss of the game, is one of these three. You just shoot Fossil Stallard's hands in the back of his head, that's it. This thing is such a pushover. I'm definitely being too harsh on a pack-in game for Nintendo Plastic, but I'm just saying, these are a bit boring. The final boss of the game being a straightforward defender is still really stupid. It should have totally been a ranger level, which we'll get into that topic in a little bit. Overall, these are fine. They're still good, but definitely my least favorite type of level in the game. They do give off arcade shooter vibes like Big Buck Hunter or Jurassic Park, which is cool. So yeah, not bad, but definitely could have been better. Or it could have been replaced with a different type of level, maybe. Alright, the last types of levels in the game. Ranger levels, which are genuine third-person crossbow shooting segments. These are 100% the best types of levels in the game. You're actually moving around the level, shooting the enemies down while you go. These don't feel like a demo of what the Wii Zapper could do. It feels like Zelda's take on something like Resident Evil 4. It's pretty cool. There's not a single ranger level that I dislike. They're all pretty good. They all play pretty much the exact same. You go around shooting down the enemies, which for some reason when you get all of them, you get a piece of the Triforce. Yep, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Of course, though, we need to talk about level 8-3, Darknut Battle. This is what the Fossil Stalord fight should have been. You fight the Dark Nut by maneuvering around his attacks because, believe it or not, a crossbow may not be the best weapon to defend yourself against attacks with. This is a really good fight for Link's crossbow training standards. It's definitely not as fun as the other fights from the series, especially when this Dark Nut fight takes only about a minute. It's a fun minute, though. The other Ranger levels are all really good, like level 5-3, the shootout. You go around this town, I'm sorry Zelda fans, I do not know the name of this town. Hyrule City! It's just cool to explore this place and shoot all the bubblins and break windows and barrels and stuff for extra points. Go into the alleys for some cool sneak attacks and stuff. I don't know, it's just a really cool level to me. Same goes for level 4-3, Skullshell Forest, where you're going around shooting the giant pieces of nightmare fuel. Like seriously, in Ocarina of Time these guys weren't too creepy. They were kind of cool actually. But in Twilight Princess or Link's crossbow training, these things are HORRIFYING! Anyway, the creepy factor of the sculptures actually make this level even better. Like, I don't like actual horror games that are meant to be terrifying, 
But when a game like Link's Crossbow Training manages to make me jump a little bit because the giant spider with a motorcycle decal on it just landed on the ground in front of me, that's pretty cool in my opinion. So yeah, overall, the ranger levels are definitely the best levels in the game. It's a shame that there's only 6 of these compared to the 10 target practice levels and 11 defender levels. And that's pretty much the entirety of Link's Crossbow Training. A fun, charming spin-off, no doubt, but to actually look at this as an entry in the Zelda series, this makes no sense. I mean, I get it, it's a spin-off, it doesn't need to follow the previous game's stories or mechanics. It's kind of like Zelda's Kid Dracula in a way. An example of this is with the fight with Fossil Stalord. In Twilight Princess, Zant actually appears before you fight Fossil Stalord. He stabs a sword into its head and that's how it comes alive somehow. This also takes place in some weird temple place or something. But in Link's crossbow training, Zant doesn't make an appearance anywhere. He doesn't stab the sword into the Stalord's head to awaken him. Stalord just wakes up in the middle of nowhere and Link has to fight him. What? No matter what the heck this game is though, this game is still insanely fun in my opinion. I feel like we should embrace more spin-off games like this, even with the concept of the ranger levels. Those are really fun. I could totally see a new Zelda spin-off like that. I'm not necessarily saying we need the Switch Zapper because dear lord that would be creepy, but it'd just be neat to see this idea come alive once again. But we can't forget what makes this game my favorite Zelda game of all time. That's right, adjust alignment mode. 